British super lightweight prospect Adam Azim moves to 8-0 with a 10-round unanimous decision win over Santos Reyes. Now, Azim is very talented. He's got fast hands, fast feet, very athletic, well-coordinated. He's got good balance, good rhythm. And going 10 rounds with this opponent, Santos Reyes, will be good experience for him. You want a prospect coming up to get the rounds in the bag. You don't want them blowing everybody out. So these are all positives. He dropped Reyes in the second round, but Reyes proved himself to be tough. He tightened up his defense. He didn't get dropped again for the remainder of the fight, nor did he get stopped. Here's where I have some reservations about Adam Azim. He holds his head up very high. He doesn't bend at the waist that often or that much. And there were moments in the fight where he was actually exchanging left hooks with his chin all the way up in the air. This is very dangerous. This is something that needs to be corrected. Also, he is in one of the deepest, most stacked divisions in the whole of boxing. You've got the likes of Regis Progre, Josh Taylor, Teofimo Lopez, Jose Ramirez, Ryan Garcia, Richardson Hitchens, Arnold Barboza, Sandor Martin, Jack Cattrall, etc., etc. Very, very stacked division. And you've also Got Devin Haney, who will surely be moving up to 140 pounds in the not too distant future. So unbelievably stacked. So when I'm assessing Adam Azim, I'm thinking about him in context of these fighters. And from what I've seen so far, yes, there's potential there, but he's going to need a lot of improvement in terms of his technique from the defense and so on before I would be confident putting him in there against any of the names I just mentioned. I think that Sky and Boxer want to make money out of Azim as soon as possible. They're talking about him being the next superstar of British boxing. I think they need to pump the brakes on all that. I get it in terms of the money, and maybe Azim and his family want to make money as soon as possible, and therefore, the best way to do that is to base him in Britain and start having headlining shows and what have you. But I think over the longer term, for his development as a fighter who is in a very, very stacked division, personally, I think it's better for them to pump the brakes on all this hype, send him over to America immediately, and start sparring all the top guys out there as a prospect. Because the UK doesn't have anywhere near as many top fighters in this division as the United States does. Yes, there's Josh Taylor, there's Jack Cattrall. Who else is there? There's nobody in the UK. Again, in the United States, Regis Progre, Teofimo Lopez, Devin Haney, who'll be moving up, Jose Ramirez, Ono Barbosa, uh, well, Sandor Martin is Spanish. I'm not sure if he bases himself in the United States, but you've got Ryan Garcia, Richardson Hitchens, et cetera, et cetera, and a whole heap of other fighters who frequent these tough gyms in America who you wouldn't have heard of, but are very good. So I think Azim would be far better off rather than just basing himself in the UK and doing all these sparring and all this stuff, but going out to America like Amir Khan did, right? He's been compared to Amir Khan and Prince Nassim and all this kind of thing. Amir Khan had to suffer a defeat, a devastating defeat, to Bradis Prescott before he realized it's best to uproot from the UK and go to the United States and base himself there. The experience that Amir Khan gained in those American gyms, in my view, is the reason he was able to get through that Marcus Maidana fight and win it. I think if he hadn't gone to America, he doesn't win that Maidana fight. So that's what I would advise for Adam Azim. I don't think that's going to happen. Azim is with Shane McGuigan. Shane McGuigan party company recently with Lawrence Akoli because Akoli has relocated to another part of the world. And Shane McGuigan has commitments to fighters in the UK. The gym doesn't revolve around one fighter. So for that reason, they party company. I have to imagine it would be the same with Adam Azim. If he decided he wanted to go to America, Shane McGuigan's probably not going to follow him there. So what I'm saying here, the thing I'm suggesting is probably not going to happen for a variety of reasons, right? The money, the sky are trying to make off him early in his career, Ben Shalom and so on, and also the situation with the trainer. But that's my take on it. Yes, he's talented, he's athletic, and all those kind of things, but this division is unbelievably stacked. He needs to get a taste for how talented and how tough the fighters at the upper echelon of the division are before he gets there, in my view, if he's going to stand any realistic chance of actually beating these guys. This is not the heavyweight division. In the heavyweight division, if you're a prospect coming up, you don't need to go anywhere necessarily. 
because you can spar Anthony Joshua, at least prior to him relocating to the States. You can spar Anthony Joshua. You can spar Joe Joyce. You can spar Tyson Fury. You can spar Dylan White. You see what I'm saying? There's lots of choice there for you in terms of learning experience. But in the super lightweight division, not so much choice, not so much opportunity. The States is where it's at. So that's my take on it. The performance itself, it was good to get the rounds in. As I said before, the hand speed, the foot speed, the coordination, the punch variety, the balance, the rhythm, it's all there. But you need the defensive technique. You need the tactical awareness. You need the mental toughness to be able to make it at the very highest level, particularly in this division. And when it comes to mental toughness, generally speaking, the gyms in America are more hostile than British gyms. There are a lot of people in there talking smack, trying to intimidate other fighters in the gym. Even when they're sparring, they spar absolutely 100% full on a lot of the time. They're talking smack in the spars. It's like Sparta in there. In British gyms, there's often a polite, friendly atmosphere with not so much of the hostility. Now, that's generally speaking. There are some gyms in the UK, or at least some camps, that are typically very, very tough. Dylan White's camps, for example, are usually very tough. He goes in there and he's trying to take people's heads off and people are trying to take his head off and there's smack talk in the spas and all that kind of thing. Dylan White is the kind of British fighter who would fit in absolutely seamlessly in an American gym, right? Because he is that kind of smack talking, confrontational, hyper aggressive character that you typically get in those gyms in the States. So he would fit in no problem. But with a lot of other British fighters who come from more polite gyms in the UK, where you're not sparring, trying to take people's heads off all the time and talking smack and it's not so hostile, it can be a bit of a psychological shock, a bit of a culture shock when they land in one of them tough American gyms, you see? But those tough American gyms will prepare you for what you're going to encounter in your actual pro fights at the top level of this division. It helped to prepare Amir Khan, and I also think it's helping to prepare Hamza Shiraz, who's a fighter at middleweight. He has been based in the United States for a while, and although he has some technical issues and stylistic issues and so on, from a mental perspective, I can see the toughness in him that was forged in those American gyms. So, as I say, that's my take on it. Give me your take in the comment section below. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalog of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.